This is the Crust Cutter 10,000, the fully autonomous crust cutting robot. Simply throw your sandwich into the cutting area, wait for the machine to locate the crust, and presto, 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 a crustless sandwich. But that's not all. This device utilizes a Raspberry Pi along with a fully custom control board to allow for a few additional operating modes, but I'll get into all that later. First, let's see just how I designed and built the decruster, and maybe, just maybe, why. I suppose you're wondering why I hate crust. Well, it's a very long story, but the gist of it is this. This is not crust. It's overbaked bread, borderline burnt. This is crust. This is delicious. This is not. So let's get on with designing the decruster so I never have to eat this garbage again. And after a good 30 hours in CAD, I came up with this. The concept is to basically have a mini robotic guillotine with two axes of freedom hovering over a turntable. The majority of the build will use V-slot extrusions for both linear motion and the main structure, with 3D printed parts for basically everything else. Let's get building. Oh, and I picked up a cool 10 meter spool of belt. Oh, that's kind of disappointing. Yes, much better. For the knife, I stopped by my local boutique chef supply store to pick up this beauty. Ooh, stainless steel. And done. But oh no, it can't move on its own. Let's fix that. So you want me to scavenge the shuffle root board again, yeah? You know what? Enough is enough. Uh, okay, then what did you have in mind? How about this? Whoa. Cool, thanks. Yeah, you got it, buddy. i finally gotten sick of the janky old shufferoo and designed my own fully integrated custom robotics control board. But why? Well, a number of reasons. It can handle more steppers, with way fancier stepper drivers. It has two high-powered DC drives, way more GPIO, a few dedicated RC servo headers, can operate without USB connection, comes in a way more compact package, has a built-in SD card slot, is fully compatible with the Arduino IDE, and last but not least, this thing is cheap. How cheap? At Quantity 10, the total assembled board costs less than $30 a piece. That's basically the same price as the Feather M4 alone, and this has so many more features. And yes, fine, why would I need 10 of these? And sure, I put well over 100 hours into developing the board and its base firmware, but it's the principle that matters, so shut up. And pro tip, don't drink three espresso shots right before you place components. It makes things difficult. Also, Never Google CSGO hacks for a video, because I'm literally still getting ads a month later. <clears throat> but does it work? Somehow, yes, it works perfectly. First try. So long, Shuffleroo, it's been great. And now for the code. You guessed it, firmware rewrite number four. But maybe this will be the last time. If you want to hear more about this board, and or maybe you're interested in getting one for yourself, let me know in the comments below. Alright, so let's give this board a proper test. Oh no, a motor stall. Guess we should rehome it, but there's no limit switch. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but there's no limit switch, so how are you gonna home it? Well, remember when I mentioned the OSR doesn't just have more stepper drivers, but better ones? Well, I'm using Trinamic stepper drivers, and these are some pretty new and advanced drivers which have a feature called stall guard, which is reading the back EMF on the motors to constantly determine how much load each motor is under. So after a little calibration, I can set it to flag me just before a motor stalls when it hits a hard stop. So how does this help with homing? Well, let's watch. As the gantry slowly moves towards its hard stop, the microcontroller will constantly monitor that stall guard flag. As soon as it's raised, it knows that it hit the end of travel, it'll stop motion, and we're done. Now I never have to design limit switch mounting positions again. Oh, wait, I never did that before? Oh, well cool, now I don't have to. So getting back to the decruster, shall we? We now have homing. We have heckin' fast and heckin' quiet motion on all three axes. And as long as you ignore the janky custom belt loop with some paper towels stuck in the joint, I think we're ready to go. But the real question is, does it chop? 
Yes, it's great at cutting air. But what about, say, carrots? The perfect human finger substitute. By the way, have you been wondering why the decruster color scheme has so much red in it? Well, it's not because Ivan is my BFF. No, it's, it's, uh, it's to hide all the blood. Yikes. So now we have a power chopper, which is cool, but it's missing something. Yes, that's right, it's open CV time. Once again, I'm using the powerful AF Raspberry Pi 4 to handle image processing with a Raspberry Pi camera V2 looking at the chopping area. How do I detect crust? It's actually pretty simple. I just take an image of the empty scene and then one after the sandwich is inserted. I subtract them, threshold them, and then I go ahead and just fit a rotated rectangle to it, do a whole bunch of math, and done. But one small problem. All the measurements coming from the camera are in pixels, because, you know, that's how cameras work. But I need to convert this to a real-world unit so I can tell my knife exactly where it needs to go. Enter the calibration target. It contains a few hundred dots and known positions, so I can use a script to capture an image, locate all the dots, and then after doing a bit of math, I can map each pixel on the camera to a very specific point in the machine's co coordinate coordinate frame. You may be thinking to yourself, why bother calibrating to submillimeter accuracy? You're cutting sandwiches. And to that I say, yeah, you're right, and then I kind of ditched this because it was way too much work. Instead, I just took a single fixed measurement and applied that scalar factor to all pixel measurements to convert to millimeters. It's good enough. So, now that I know where my sandwich is, all I have to do is send some commands over serial from the Pi to my OSR control board, and... No more crust. I'm chopped. <laughs> oh yeah, I also had a speaker with a few phrases to accompany the chopping. I uh, don't know why. But of course, this invention can go so far beyond simply cutting the crust off of sandwiches. It actually has some more practical features, like finger sammy mode, which not only removes the crust, but also cuts them into bite-sized pieces. Perfect for your next tea party, I guess. Sorry, I'm really hung up on the sandwich side of things. Let's try carrots. Still using OpenCV to locate the carrot's position and orientation, I can then run a precise chopping routine. Which, unfortunately, didn't go so great this time because, well, round things like to roll. It's a good thing somebody invented files. Well, I was going for 5mm, so really not all that bad. Which got me thinking, just how thin can I slice a carrot? Well, as long as I secure it properly, this thin. Noise. Oh, but there's more. Are you tired of tearing up whenever you cut onions? Because I sure am. Well, you can let the spot dice them for you complete with sound effects and everything. I was having a few issues with the onion sticking to the knife this time around, so next time I'll spray some WD-40 on there. But it still managed to dice this half pretty well. And while we're on the subject of chopping things, let's see what else we can throw at it. And while that diced tortilla chip went really well, this pop art not so much. Actually, you know what, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, I meant to do this, that's fine. Fun stuff. So, what did I learn by doing this project? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm, which translates into even more stupid projects for all to enjoy. And an even bigger thanks to all my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support even more unique and questionable projects like this, the link is in the description below. Feel free to leave any thoughts or project suggestions you have in the comments. Until next time, peace out!